so concerning the assignment that I was giving last time, uh, the AUC assignment, I get uh, half of you try, and this is the best thing that you can do it, try, okay? Because this is how you learn it by trying it, by trial and errors, you know, try and errors. errors. So, and I, I figure out the two potential solution that can be suboptimal. They're not 100% correct. We need to spend a bit of time to make better, but this is how you, you keep doing and learning. And actually sometimes find out two solution can rise up potential difference, okay? So let's see together what we find out, um, what they find out as a solution, and then maybe someone can come up with another solution, maybe even look do. Okay, so we have the first one. The first solution um, is a bit of combination uh, about, is a for loop, is a for loop. Okay, before the for loop, for loop we, we create a unique, File, a file with unique dates, okay? This is, in this way you have, uh, you have an output that is just the full output one. And this one, of course, is under the, the syllabus where there are the syllabus, there are also the solutions, so you can follow directly. So over here you can, you can have the list of the date. Okay, so, so far, most of you did it and did it correctly. So it's, it's a good point. Then what, what we can do it? We can do it also, uh, create a list of unique ID station and latitude. Okay, so also for this case, going to get the output and it's going to be ID, so unique, station with the lat long. And this is done with the typical grep, okay? With the typical grep and grepping GSIM and latitude. Be, be, be careful about this one because the paste function is working just like making, the you have the first column coming from this grep, okay? And then you have the second column coming from this other grep and, and so on. So you have to be extremely careful in using this because you know what is happening if in one file you don't have latitude information, okay? So you will have, you know, you will have something like this, okay? So four line here is going to miss one, okay? And or even worse, it's going to be two. So for example, it's going to be very good also checking the tail of this one, okay? Because if you have one column, one file that does not have lat log information or even a GCM information, because you suppose that this one, they're going to be the same length by the paste. But if they are not, you will get something in the last row missing. And of course, they are going to be shifted. So this system cannot work if you have some missing information, okay? Okay, so could be also that you have some empty file because you have the shift, you have the shift, the missing row and some empty line over here. For example, this one can be missing or they can be that you have over here some missing lat lock, okay? So in the middle, this one is missing, okay? So it will be good also to, to run this one, to run a check, the tail as we did, but also to count the number of row. The, sorry, the, 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 the number of row and the number of field. Okay, so number of field for this one, print number of field. And it's going to be three everywhere. So you can even say, okay, if, if number of field number of field is not equal is not equal to three then print number of field and as you can see it's not equal to three everything is equal to three so if i don't print anything everything is equal to three so every time that you do a you know you do a potential output try to overcheck 
some because you, you don't know the file are many so something can happen if they are very well standardized your output is what you should have but it could be that is not okay so at this point we we do a, a bit of something a bit particular um so we do a for loop so we look through the date okay i'm going to cut the full file inside here i have my date okay so be careful that this one now is becoming uh, a full list okay some of you i think sebastian was giving di directly the for date in dollar date and the dollar date was a very long list of variables so what is happening this one was not because this one was too long and was overpassing the number of uh, line inside to the bash term okay in the command so and then he was getting some strange error so it's good if you do in and then you put here the variable but this one can be you know like 200 400 but cannot be like million okay or thousand of lines so that one is the way to to avoid by cutting uh, the the variable that is going to change looping through inside of file then okay we do the echo for percentage to see where it is then what we do now we do uh, we do it something else we grab the station sorry we grab the line in one file so if we have a file over here so you remember the structure of the file so we get one file okay so we get one one in particular like this one and we say grab okay so we grab all this line this is the what is this grab is doing okay Th then is taking out all the different comma and dots okay to uh to have just space separated because in linux in bash the easy way to work always with space separate because you don't have to insert every time and then we say okay if dollar three okay um here is dollar three because uh when you do grep in many file you is going to give you also the file name so if i'm going like this and i grab this number it's going to give you also the file the file name okay so I, I want to get rid of of this information and they say if dollar three equal to na so it's one this is becoming space due to the gsu this one is the date and then i print na okay this is na so i say if it's not na okay be careful because uh, quotation here because if you use a character and is not between quotation he consider as a variable a predefined variable so be careful when you when you specify a number you don't need to put a quotation but if you specify a character you need to put a quotation then then you, what do you have you have the uh printing printing sub uh, substring because you want to print this one as a name of the station and you don't want to the dot n so you go from one uh, sorry dollar one you go from one to ten so from one to ten because ten is the character of key four and then you print dollar three that is going to be your value okay in this case it's all na but somewhere they're going to be value Okay, so at this point, what do you have? You have a file when you have the date, the ID, the date, the ID, and the mean. But you are missing a lot long information. Okay, they were up into the string. So at this point, you can do a join between the file that we just created. Sorry, the, yes, yes, between the file that we just created and the lot long information that we open we just created before okay and the join is going to be one to one so it's going to get rid of of all the information all the no missing no matching line and it's going to retrieve only the information about uh 
about uh, yes about the result and then of course we we remove some intermediate file so again this is it this is a for loop that is using a grep function to get some information from a file and then a join because be careful once again be, be careful about the join that every time that you do some operation you have to sort it the file that are that are joining okay so you will get a warning uh, and if you don't sort it, okay? And also here I've been sorted, okay? And I've been sorting through the, the main ID or the so-called KID. Or, um, you will get a warning um, that likely has been appearing the last years in, in, uh, in, uh, in Linux, but before there was no warning, so you were sorting, and the, but the sorting was wrong. Okay, so was, you were joining without sorting that the, the joining was wrong and you could not know. Now they insert a word. Perfect. So this operation of sorting is very long. Okay. And even the join. Okay. So this kind of process can be can be quite long. Okay. Uh, but this is the solution that I was thinking to use it. Okay. So uh, the be the beauty of this, okay, so you can. Uh, you are looping date by date, okay? So for one date, you are going to loop in through all the, all the file through this, okay? Uh, you are going to produce a unique file every time, sorry, a unique file, this one, every time this is going to be unique because you have the, the, the date that is changing every time that this one is looped. Okay, every time that this one is changed. But what is happening that this for loop this time is going to read, is going to read everything every time, all the file every time that you change one of these. Okay, so it's, 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 it's consuming. But then we can, we can see the beauty in another way. Okay, so this is the first solution. Any 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 question about this? Is is it clear? It's a bit a bit difficult to understand. I, I have and, a question. Please, just. Um, I I did a join, but I didn't do any sorting, and I didn't get any error or warning message. But I, I think uh, it's working. Okay, can be. <laughs> yes, can be lucky that they were already sorting. You were maybe you you, you were lucky that the kind of they were already sorted, uh, especially, you know, this one, for example, when you do this, is going to be sorted because this is sorted already because it's not LS asterisk. Mm -hmm. So it's going to sort based on, on the uh, binary sorting of the LS. So if you do this, Yes, and then this one also can be so is also sorted because it's similar to this one. So in some cases you don't get the warning, so it means that are sorted. Okay, but mm. it's good to double check and maybe put an extra sorting and in this way you are in the same area size. Okay, very good. Just any any other question? Okay. Uh, be careful about this when you use this once again about the paste that this one they need to be i think in your case just now i don't remember 100 percent because yours was slightly different could be that you are encountering some problem in your paste because you don't the file they don't have the same length okay so this file they have several observations Okay, so if you do, we'll see, you, you have several, in each file, there are several rows. Okay, so they can, the paste is depending what you are pasting, can, you know, can, can be wrong again, because these need to be the same length, these three. If they are not the same length, then they can be, uh, can be wrong. But anyway, try to check, I need to reopen yours, I don't remember, I open all of them. Um, so I see that some of you can, can have some potential problem with this one. 
okay? Um, and also the join can be quite long if the file is big. So in some case, the file becomes big and you can see that this operation, click, 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 so it's, it's quite slow due to this. But there, there are going to be some beauty about and then we can talk. Okay, so then, um, then solution two actually come from, from Sebastian, so very good Sebastian, but I was tweaking a bit because it was good idea, but it was not perfect, okay? And uh, very good that you think about, so I didn't think about in this direction, so uh, super kudos to you. And what is the beauty of this? Let, let's see together. So he say for each single file, so let's suppose only one file, this one, we get only one file. Okay, so, and now we need to understand what is doing it there. These one are quite straight. I'm going to get for each file, gsim, my value. So this is going to return me, if I paste here, it's going to return me, you know, the number of station, uh, yeah, the station ID. And this one, the lot long, the same, it's just another column, okay? My dollar i is the, the name of the, uh, the file does it change. Okay, so far, good. Here I'm printing just a progress, just to form my idea. And now what I'm going to say, okay, this one I bring inside AWK. Okay, so I bring all this one inside. Actually, this one you don't, we don't need, uh, the, this one was adding by, by Sebastian, but I didn't use, so we, we can remove this. Anyway, don't think about this one. Huh? This one is just empty. Okay, so um, then over here, what they do it. Um, okay, like all, like before I change the, the, the comma to space and be careful about this. I do, okay, starting from number two, number 22, because the first, the first uh, file, the first um, column are just the header and this one is the 23. Okay, so bigger than 23, print what? GSIM, so all these variables that you bring it, and then the column two, that is this, okay? So what is doing this one? And why I'm putting this one? How AWK is working, once again? Who can tell me? It will append. Yeah, it will append, but append what? And why I put append? So you will be writing. Let's say that is writing, but is writing what? Every row, because it's going down in automatic, and every row is going to write. Every row is going to write. It's going to write what? It's going to write a file that is called slash out to put two as the directory, the name of the file is this one. Okay, so every row is going to write a file with this ID that is the station ID, that is this one. So, sorry, not the station, the, the date. Okay, because dollar one is the date. So I'm going to say, okay, this one is going to be my first TXT file. Then I'm going to read the second file and it's going to be the second file with, you know, like written like this. Actually, I can open because I have the file. How to put two. Okay, so it's going to be this one, the 80. Okay, this, this data, just the first row, they are slightly different, okay? So this one is going to be the first file and then second row, this one, third row, second row, and every time is going to change. Okay, so, so far, very beautiful. Okay, super good, Sebastian. But then what is happening, the first file is fine. Okay, so the first file is fine because it's creating n number of files. But I need to do the append because after the second file, I can have already this, okay? I can have already one file with that information. So I need to append it, 
Okay. So the beauty of this is, is very good, okay, because I'm reading only one times the file, only one time. So it's super fast. Okay. Only one times I read it, this one. I don't read n times. Okay. When this, the first one is going to be done, this when the, the first file is going to be done, this one, I'm not going to read again. I'm producing this one is going to do. So for example, this is going, how many files is going to produce this guy? Is going to pro, this guy is going to produce 622 file, sorry, minus 22 that are the header. Okay, so it's going to produce 600 of the 620, uh, 600, yeah, 600 of these. Okay, could be they can have one line or they can have more line. Actually, no, the first time is going to have only one line. Then the second times, and then of course, if these are already created, it's going to append. Okay. Is it clear? Lonzu, you were thinking something similar? Hey, Giuseppe, it's, it's a very nice solution, um, but I have can propose some ideas to, to improve it just by reading this solution too. So first of all, I noticed that there are three variables, g theme, let, long, or like their um, output from three org commands. So what I mean is that means in each operation, your org will do this uh, scanning one time. At least it will read a file, yeah. uh, you know, for each operation you need one time, right? You need like, you know, at least read to line to 11, 15, 16. So, so if you combine these three into one to hold the cursor in the, in the command, you can make it faster. That's one potential place you can uh, improve. And the other one is, you know, you do this like in sequential manner. You, you, for, you know, in the initial loop, you loop through all the files one by one. Yeah. So yeah. I think you probably can do the parallelization. Instead of looping one by one, you create uh, output. No? You do think it's good it work? This was going to be the, 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 student, the question for the student. Which one I can parallelize? This or this one? So here is where we go in, inside of the multicore. Here is where we go inside of the multicore. Anyone? Okay, so let's, I, don't let's... Can, I don't think you can do it to the, the second one because since Why? they're pending, they would be appending at the same time. And it would Bravo, kind of very good, very good. Bravo, Sebastian. Cannot really do it over here, okay, because you can, up, you can read the file with, with, from multiple processors, but from different processors, but you cannot write from different, from two or three processors to the same file. Okay, so the appending here, for example, if I'm going to write to this file from two different of these, because, okay, then it's going to be, yeah, it's going to work. It's not giving warning, be careful, but your file will be corrupted and not precise. You get it, Lonzu? Unless you propose something different that you can- Yeah, but temporarily. you gave different names. Yeah, but in the you this no, no, you, you give the output different names. Yeah, you can you can do something else, and then you will have you know uh, you you need yeah, I get what you mean. You will import it something else in inside, of, but you need to build up a slightly different. It's not that you change just just this one in a for loop in a XR for loop. Rather here, here you can go directly without problem, you just change this one with the XR and it's going to work. Okay. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, I see so, the point. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is the the point that I want to raise. That be careful when you do the multi-core in XARG. You cannot write into the to the same file. Okay. Very good. Uh, for sure, there are going to be other solutions. So feel free to test this one and to testing other solution. Um, here over here, there was also, I also inserting some, something that I didn't understand what is doing is creating a variable, a directory over here. So probably this one was a question from you, Sebastian, that you were saying. So I, I need to remove this directory in automatically coming from, yes, from here, I think. I, I don't know why it's creating. So I remove this directory after each operation. And also, if, of course, I have two solutions and two of them, they don't give me, per okay, they give me perfect, the same perfect result inside to the same file. So if I get one file, they give me the same result. Okay, no doubt. But for example, if I print a number of file in the two, I count the number of file in the two solution, one is slightly less, okay? I know that there are one that is producing some empty file. I think um, one of the is empty. Not this, this one, but these I think is empty. So over here, there are two that are empty. Could be that are empty, okay? Because there are no observation in that date, could be. But you know, but you okay. I'm so two are empty, so I should be able to get to the same number. So one is not producing these, and the other one is producing these that is empty. So it's good to have a, a double solution also to check for potential error. Okay, so this is a good testing. Of, we are already inside the big data. These are start to become you. You know, if you don't do properly it start to become long and now again we are looping only through united states but the station are, are much more if you do it through all the data set okay very good um so feel free to to, to move around or making question or try with the solution and checking all there is but very good that you point the solution and and so on so Try, try as much. Don't, don't finish on the, on the. I mean, on the syllables, on these. Uh, uh, yes, on the. Uh, on these exercise and this assignment, to try to use as much as much as possible AUK for other kind of analysis. Okay, uh, so for example, JD, he was already asking me uh, today how using. Uh, I have a bunch of points, and I want to see if they are failing inside to my uh, United States, for example. Polygon. So, and we, I suggest to him, okay, GDAL location info, he found out the solution that GDAL location info can, if I have a raster file, zero outside United States, you know, and one in all United States, I can use GDAL location info and it's, it's going to give me zero one. Okay. So then if I use paste, okay, um, paste the coordinates and the uh, and the, the output of uh, of GDAL info, I'm going to have a, a, a TXT file with three three, cor uh, three uh, columns x and y plus zero or one the other column. Be careful that if the file is completely outside, it's going to be empty that low row. So this is something that also you need to check. is is an empty line, but is a line. So this one should not create any any problem then with the if condition but something that you have to keep in mind okay um can i ask something yeah please uh, i was just wondering in the example there where you give the solution what the file should look like a little bit up um you use the vertical bar as a separator is uh that yeah yes in common? right yeah so your result is also fine uh, i use the vertical bar frankly speaking because when i when I was trying to do the table in this markdown language, I could not find the space for the table. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so that you also put the vertical bar is fine. You know, it's not uh, the vertical bar. But it's not bar something that you normally use, is it? In, or 
No, usually we always use the space, okay? Yeah. All, all, here it was because I could not find out to make a table in Markdown, so I, okay. I find out this way for a fast procedure. Um, um, actually, what is, it was funny because it was creating Markdown, but not, it was not transferred to the HTML. So I say, okay, let me find a temporary solution. This one is an output, is a column separator uh, use it quite a lot by by grass when grass is printing tables is printing with this one so quite often we we do the opposite i from the, the table of grass i took it out to this with the oak using g sub or with seed okay um but anyway good that uh, all of you try to to us to make this assignment as you can see your is a matter of practice but then slowly you can come across as some potential solution. Very good. Um, any any question in this line? Yeah, I had a question um, regarding Lonzu's kind of suggestion with the, the three different awk commands in the second solution. So he was saying that you could do it with one awk command. Um, how would you, I guess, how would you do that? Because I was trying, I tried to do that, but I didn't know how to do it like with the number of rows to pick out the different things. So I ended up just doing it in three different commands. I think you need to create a file with the three information. Oh no, I won't do. You need to create a file with the three information and then using that one, cut that file and then create variables in that file. Could be. Yeah, I mean, the easiest one will be you combine your three org into one or condition and you output these three outcomes into a file that's one solution it won't take too much and alternatively i think you can create an array in in shell and output those one into an array in the shell but whichever you prefer i think yeah. probably the, the output of the file is easier is easier yes yeah not you have to print the three value and then you have to pass, but due to that you will have the space, you need to be sure that this, this variable, new variable that is going to be a string is going to read each thing. So it's, it's a bit, uh, you need to be careful how you do it. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's doable, just be a little careful because the array syntax in, in bash is different from the arc. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Thanks, Lonzo. Okay, let's move uh, to the um, to the second part of the lecture. So um, I'm going to open the virtual box. Okay, so this is going to be the virtual box. So like like you usual, you enter in the C data. Okay, you do git pull. Okay, everything update, you you change to, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, control R, R sync. Okay, and then you change this directory. Perfect, so you, we enter in the usual directory, CD exercise. Okay, so I enter also in this one. CD, perfect. So, and here we are going to open uh, this file PK tools. So that is the one that you, you just click over here. And by the way, I'm also in touch with the developer. So it's probably coming to, to Matera to present a new uh, package that is developing in, in Python using these tools. Okay, so, and then we open over here, we do Jupyter, the source, let me look here. Source activate, and I'm going to open Jupyter Lab, and I'm going to go PK Tools. Okay, PK Tools or SGO. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to have PK Tools here. You can follow from here or from the command line over here. So, um, PK tools is the is the I always say is the, the, the cousin or the young brother 
of GDAL because Peter, the developer of PK Tools, and you can go directly to his web page that is maintaining in a really efficient way. So the manual is really getting at high standard nowadays. So I was, he was the developer and I, I was the main bug, the one that was to find bugs and because I was testing continuously his tools. But at the moment, it is really rare that you find some bugs, you know? So they are super efficient tools. They've been developed together with the GDAL. So they, they born together, or at least GDAL just a few years before. So some functions, they are in overlapping, but even if they are in overlapping, they can be com completely compatible together, okay? So uh, you can do a combination of bash script where you have PK tools and GDAL combined as you want in according to what you need, okay? And like, again, some, some function, they are in overlapping, like for example, cropping an image in terms of extent, you can do it with PK crop, or with the GDAL translate and give in the coordinates. Um, so then it's just a matter which one you are you are more used to, yeah, you are used to use it. And for example, for cropping, I never use PK crop, even if I know that exists, but I always use GDAL translate. Rather for other, there are completely unique from both sides, like GDAL warp, but there is not a warping tools in PK tools. So I'm not going to, to use PK tools. But for some other are unique also the, the picket function. And in particular, so if you go over here and you do um, available tools, you can see all of them, they start with the PK. Let's go directly in, uh, in one that we, we use it quite a lot. For example, PK composite, let's use this one. And any, anyway, you can, you can open whatever you want. You can see that there is the, is the typical bash function, bash, bash uh, syntax. So you, you have always the command. Then you have, be careful, you have the I stay for I input. And this is something a bit different from tra GDAL translate because you don't specify the I as an input. Then whatever is between brackets, square brackets. So in this case, all this one, for example, is going to be compulsory. Uh, sorry, optional, optional. They are also called flag in the in the terminology. And then you have the O that stay for output. Okay. So over here you can have all the specific of the command. And sometimes here you can have the example over here. Or sometimes even if you're scrolling down, you have over here more question and more e example. So for some they are very uh, exhaustive, you know. And there are many, for some other is better you make a trial and how you make a trial with a little uh, raster file that now you know how to create from the ASCII file. And with that one, you can, if you don't know the output, you even if, because sometimes it's, it's quite hard to understand uh, and enter in the, in the process flow that I would say is very similar to the GDAL, okay? The, the terminology and the, um, uh, yeah, the way of thinking, uh, the, the use of masking, yeah, terminology and so on is very similar. So when you read one manual, you can shift it immediately to the other one and you will understand and see what they use. Also in terms of flags, most of, the, most of them, they are very similar. So for example, the, this one is output source projection information and the, the same for GDAL and PK tools. So he has been using, um, the same term, this, is, this has been done very good from Peter because using the same terminology, they can really help in the, the, the user um, in, in getting. So all these one are the different option that you, this manual you can access directly also with, if you write PK and then you write tab, okay, you get all the different um, PK tools, be careful because some of these are not PK tools, like PK action is something is a, is a bash command. It's not from PK tools, but PK composite and you, you put the dash dash help is going, is going to get perfect the same what you have over here, okay? It's going to, to be perfect the same. And here, uh, and you can use both. Here is a bit more table oriented. Here is tax oriented but you can you can read carefully everything okay 
Um, and this is, for example, PK composite is very good for making composite of image. Okay, so when you have, for example, MODIS, MODIS image or Landsat image, they are in overlap in a different way. You know, you, you can do composite in, in, a, in the vertical profile. Um, then uh, some, some other one, PK crop for cropping. Okay, this is a I'm not using so much, uh, but for example, we we can see if if there are some some particular option. One of them that is quite beauty on this is most of the time that you can use it during an operation. You can using a masking. You can do a masking. So what does it mean? Do this operation but excluding this pixel. Okay. So this is quite beauty, and we will see example. Um, yes, because you can concentrate only in the area that you want to process, only under some, some pixel value that you want to process. This is something that in GDAL there is a, a kind of masking operation, but it's very, it's not developed very well. So over here, I, I, if you enter into the system, you can see that it's very convenient to use it. Um, so, and then there are some other that are in the let's say in the processing, pre-processing of image, like PK com com composite, uh, composite or PK, we, we say the other one, PK crop, but there are some other that are a bit more advanced in the post-analysis, in the post-processing, let's call it, like doing image analysis through neural network, or there is the other one with the support vector machine, okay? So these one are a bit more unique, let's say, and, Frankly, I use it a few times, but you know, only when you have to do the, the classification. Rather, all the other, or most of them, they are very good when you, to, you have to do other kind of processing. So for example, another one, some people was asking to create, um, to go from a text file to shape file. So to a vector, you have a X and Y coordinate and you want to, uh, you want to create a, a vector file. I think it was JD or somebody else. So over here, the PK ASCII to OGR, this one is this is what you 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 can do it. You can give the input that is going to be your X and Y coordinate. So the one, in other words, the one that we were using for GDA location info, and you can create directly your vector format. Uh, vector format and raster format that are all the GDAL format that we were using so when you were doing gdal translate dash dash format you you get for formats you get all the format that you can use and i think this option is also also on the pk pk stuff but if it's not there okay it's not there but is including all of them okay so PK start, PK start and PK tools is, re, is using all the GDAL form. GDAL or also GR. So it's going to use also a uh, vector file as a shape file or other as a packet, a job package or some other style. Okay. Um, then, uh, so these are quite handy to use it. So uh, PK reclass, for example, is also for use doing a classification. So you have an input file where you have pixel value two, all the pixel two, you want to become 25. All the pixel three, you want to become 28, whatever. Okay, reclassification of some pixel. Uh, so this is also, is not present in GDAL. So let's say with the combination of GDAL and PK tools, you can do all the raster operation that you are doing all of them all of them what you cannot do it is like a mixing spectral analysis something really uh, remote sensing related topic you know uh, but whatever is raster in terms of pre-processing with these tools you can do it it's just a matter of combining all of them or some of them and do it carefully uh, find which one to use it or not. Uh, there is the other one like PK filter uh, is for all the different filter. So filtering and aggregation. 
So in filtering aggregation, I mean about moving window or block size uh, moving window. So, and in, uh, uh, you know, in R you use it aggregate, over here you use PK, PK filter, and these are developing under C++, uh, C++, so they are extremely fast, like GDAL, extremely fast. They don't use a lot of RAM. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's, very, it's very easy that you can go in the multi-core process, okay? So is uh, all of them, they also use the, uh, the compression algorithm. So you can always specify the compression with the same flagging of GDAL. So is <clears throat> Is, is a lot of uh, this kind of operation. Any any one of you was using, has been heard about it, um, these tools, or you were using or searching for something you didn't find GDAL, and you want to say, can I do this with the PK tools? And you are happy to, we will be happy to, to reply. Marlene, you were using a bit, and if yes, for what? Um, yes, I was using the PK crop already. PK crop for cropping, like in, in yeah. GDAL Translate, yeah? Yeah, so using a shape file to, to crop Perfect. the raster file. Yeah, some of these PK crop, for example, use can use an external uh, a third party, let's call it a third party shape file or even raster file to, to cropping, okay? Or somebody else was trying to do something and he didn't find them. Want to share something? Anyone else? Jiske, you were trying to do something, some composite of modis. I don't know. I don't know your field of expertise. No, I haven't tried using the PK tools. Okay, some operation GIS that you say, I, I wish to do this in a fast way. I used, I tried to use R uh, earlier on for doing some okay. satellite, Landsat processing. Yeah, okay, cool. So we will see, I mean, you will see the, the real, the difference. Even if they say now with the, with the package Terra in, uh, um, in R is getting better in terms of speed, uh, but you will see the, 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 the fastness of GDAL and PK tools compared to R. R. And uh, if you start to get used, you, you will find really efficient and so on. Um, Sebastian, from you. You were trying to do something or you say, I wish to find the tools that does this. Yeah, so I was, how do you decide to, you know, if you're gonna mosaic, you said you can do it with PK tools, you can do it with GDAL. Which one, maybe not which one's better, but which one's easier? Okay. Or, yeah, yeah in, in this case, for example, um, the kind of mosaicing, so let's see that this is a good point. The kind of mosaic, the, 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 this is the kind of mosaic in, in where the experience is going to help you in and uh, um, the trials is going to help you in deciding. So we were doing a sort of mosaicing the other time with the build VRT in a separate way, okay? Uh, but uh, you, when you do the VRT in a separate way, and even if you don't do it separate, but they, they are not overlapping, so they are like this, and then you create a, a file with the GDAL translate, you, you cannot, in GDAL, you cannot define which one to use it. It's going to get the first one. If it's in other overlap, it's going to get the first one. Okay, or the last one is depending which tools of GDAL you use. It is not really very standardized. Rather in PK tools, you can say you can specify get the last one, get the last, or get in the mean, getting the maximum of all these Y in overlapping. So sometimes they can do the same uh, operation, but they are slightly different. And for this, you need to testing and read carefully in the manual. Okay. Um, so the beauty is that if you if you ask, I can tell you immediately. If you, 
and if not, you have to keep reading and trial. That's why it's good to have um, to have this dummy dummy uh, TIFF file in terms of asking. This way, you can do the analysis and then see what the pixel is. Because if you start to do it in a big TIFF, you know you you, you don't see the pixel value. You cannot really understand because sometimes it's not really re written. You know, sometimes I always say, why don't they don't make a picture, a figure? Because with the words, it's not really easy to, to understand what it's doing. So this is what I always try to say, suggesting. But anyway, let's go and directly in the tools and we will see how to use it. Okay, so you, you have the Jupyter notebook open over here. And like before, I, I'm going to use uh, also the terminal to open some files. So we go down to this one. Okay, so the, the, uh, the other day we were, you remember, we were using uh, Oak and we were changing a T file, in particular, we were changing a T file to, to create X and Y coordinates, okay? Um, to create and to change value of some pixel. And we were doing it in a text file, okay? This is again, I mentioned to you is not an efficient way to do it because every time that you change from binary to text file, your file is going to become extremely big, okay? Because the binary is, a, is already compressed a language, uh, written language uh, for the computer. Rather, the text file is already transferring something that we can read. And of course, the machine is going to bring back to binary and, and then this is going to be big in size and big in processing. So this one is not an efficient way to do it, but it's good to know because sometimes you really need to, to see the pixel that are, are the value of the pixel that are changing. So if you were taking this, this file and you were, see. Okay. No, no, it's not this one. Okay, like always. Your data. Version and eleven. So if you are see this one, the crop underscore txt. Okay. So you will see that we were the, the this file was changing to x and y coordinates. So this is a good way because you can have for each single pixel the transformation of each single pixel in the x and y coordinate with the keys value. And then with oak, we were changed to 50, some particular value. And then from this, we were converted back to the TIFF. So and the final result was to have something pretty similar, but where all the pixel has been transferred, has been transformed to 50. So all this gray area has been changing to, to 50, yes. So you can see the value over here, that is 50, that has been accomplished these thresholding uh, rules. Mm -hmm. So uh, now at this point, can we do this operation of masking? And I mean, changing some range, everything that is between some range in zero, um, in a zero one uh, operation, okay? So this one is done mainly, mainly with a PK get mask. Be careful about this get mask and set mask. There are two commands and you, you need to understand when to use it one. The get mask is like they say the word and when you create the mask, get stay for creation. When the PK set mask is when you apply the mask to another image, okay? And I hope that everybody know the concept of masking is nothing else that you have two teeth, you won't apply everything. You have a mask that is zero one, you won't apply the one, to the other teeth. This masking operation is very well known in the, in, in, uh, in the raster environment for masking out some particular value, okay? So uh, the, the get masking, how is working? 
So you identify two value or two threshold, two, uh, yeah, two threshold that you want to identify. So, and for example, in this case, you say all the pixels that are between one and two, inside the one and two, put one, rather outside to this range, put zero, okay? So this one can be changed. So that's why I'm creating different mask because you can change as you wish, you know? Uh, from one to two can be water and from five to eight can be bare soil, okay? So you are going to create two masks or you are going to even create another mask from zero to 10. So you can go by and be careful that you can also, it's not always the mask zero one, but you can also invert in one to zero according to what you want and how you, you can structure the, the stuff. So in other words, if you run this one, you are going to get through different, three different masks. And we can say that all of them, they will be zero one, but in a different location. Okay, let's try to run this and to open these this one. So these are going to be my TR01. I need to take out the crop. What is this? T18 mean 11.01. Okay. Okay, so over here I have the two, the, the three band, the three masking, open EV. Now I can open. So you can see that I have three different values. Again, be careful that sometimes are completely white because they, they, you don't stretch it. So over here I have, you know, the zero one in this area. Then if you do the other one, I have the zero one somewhere else over here. And this one is going to be zero one somewhere else here, okay? So again, also this one. So it's going to be, you have three independent masks, zero, one. Now you say, can I use these masking, three masks and masking out my maps? Yes, you can do it. So this one, I can close it now. Yes, you can do it with G, uh, sorry, with PK set mask. And again, also the set masking is super flexible. I can say, okay, use mask one, but where is one, put minus nine. So I'm, I'm going to put a different value because I want to know which value come from which mask. Okay, I know that the true, the, the A is going to be labeled with minus nine. The B with minus five and the C what minus 10. So I'm going to in, in the overlapping mode in according to this one, the one become minus one, the one become 99. Now, if I run this one, you can see that if I open my final mask and that my value that has been masked and this, most of the time I call it MSK, MSK that is going to be masked, okay, I can open and I can see that in according to the, where my one in my masking was located, okay, I can get the three different value. So over here, if you, if you going, you can see, let me see, the different value. So for example, this one is going to get minus 10. You can see down here, okay, again. Here, the water is minus 10. Then if you go somewhere else, you will find the minus nine and the minus five in accord. So probably this one is the, the other one. This is still minus 10. And this is one of these is probably the minus five, 
okay? So you can keep in track of the masking operation by giving a different value. Of course, here you can give also the same value. Eh? It's not doesn't change, but this is to, to give you flexibility. So all these tools that have been flexible that you can combine as you want and get all the value that you want. So, so always remember, get mask to create the masking, V01, and set mask to apply the masking to some other raster. Yes, Alonso. What does the stretching does to the raster? And also, in, in which occasions would you use this type of masking, like in, in an example? Okay, so for example, you know, in the satellite image, for example, you know that all the value close to zero when you have a spectral signature are water, okay? Close to zero, okay, let's say minus between five and zero water or wet, extremely wet area. So what do you do it? You, you create a masking from zero to, to five. So over here, you will say from zero, from zero to five, from zero to five, put zero because you don't want in the zero to five, uh, zero, no data, one, okay? And then you are going to use this masking operation to the other one. And you will mask out all the potential spectral area that have water. But this is not only you know, for water stuff, you can, you can masking out, you have, for example, land cover. You have a land cover and you want, you have 10 classes, okay? You want to get rid of three classes, okay? So you do three masking, okay? And of course, if you want to get rid of three classes, let's suppose you want to get rid of two, you can also, the class number two. So you're going to say minimum uh, 1.5, maximum 2.5. So inside here, you know that this one is going to get rid of class two because it's in the middle. Then you have another one. Want to get rid of, of class number six, six point, actually, 6.6, so it's going to be 5.5 and 6.5. And this one is going to get rid of number class. So then in the end, you can change over here. You know, you get the last one, class number eight. So it's going to be 7.5 to uh, 8.5. So this one is going to be the same one and zero. So by this one, you are going to be sure, you know, that you are creating 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 for the three masks, for the three classes. And then when you apply, you are going to get rid of, of all the value between, uh, we say, 2, 5, and 8. So this is another example of masking operation. So your final map, this one, will not have these three values, will not have this one. Of course, be careful always to have the extent, the map with the same extent, the raster with the same pixel value, pixel extent. So all the, what I mentioned the other day in GDAL about the extent, pixel resolution, you need to be sure, okay? Because of course, if you have the masking, you know, is not overlapping, the pixel are not different. Maybe you will not have a warning because sometimes they don't give a warning, but the output will be, uh, you don't know what is going on. So be careful about the pixel and the extent. Because these tools, they work very well when they, all the pixels are very aligned and the extent are really aligned. Okay. Okay, very good. So this masking operation can be used. So the concept of masking can be used in several tools. So that's why it's also, also explained as a first one. Because in the meantime that you do some operation, you can use the masking, okay? So for example, over here in the PK, uh, yes, in the, for the composite image, for example, let's, let's create a masking, a new mask, because I'm going to close this one. Yes, let's create a new masking in particular, 
I'm going to, you know, to create a mask. I'm using all these files. I'm going to use several files that are in LST. So under these geodata, there is the LST. And as you can see, I have several T files. Okay. I have several T files. I'm going to use it one month in particular, any month, and just getting one and say, okay, create a mask where all my value between zero and 25 become a zero and outside become one. So again, I run this one. So let's see the mask over here. So I'm going to use months one. So LST, LST months one dash mask. Okay, so I'm going to have, okay, I'm going to have again at zero one, so be careful, you need to stretch, where I have all the value over here. If you remember over here, there was the water. So in this case, I'm going to create a masking with the water. So here is zero and here is one. Perfect. So now re remember this image. Now I'm going to get water. I'm going to use it, PK composite, to use all this file. So in particular, I'm going to use all this file, the months question mark, dot tiff. So I'm going to use this. So there are two of these, three of these, and another one, this one. Okay, so they are in total 12 file. So you can see over, over here, I have 12, the two dot, and also the one, sorry, not the, one question mark over here. And now I will explain this one. So over here, I have all this file. I'm going to overlapping all of them, okay? And during the overlapping, I'm going to make a composite, and then I'm going to, to get the minimum value, the mean of all these value. But I'm going to masking during this operation, whatever was considered water. I'm going to use my dash M, the file that I just created before, okay? So it's going to do the mean everywhere, but not where I have the water, okay? So the, the pixel value, you, you will see the final result. So let's run also this one. And I make two, 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 two examples, one with the mean and one with the standard deviation. So uh, if I want to do a mean standard, so as you can see, this one is, is a bit long operation because it's 12 file. I'm going to overlapping and do the mean through the, temp, the temporal domain of the 12 months, but it's going to be accomplished. In particular, I have the value with the mean that is going to be months max month mean, okay, that is going to be, okay, so it's going to be the mean everywhere, but over here is going to be the value of the mask is going to be over here, you know, zero. And over there, there was no any mean operation because has been masked during the composite process. Okay, perfect the same with the standard deviation. Okay, perfect, the same with the stand deviation. But be careful about this. Over here, I specify that my mask node data will become one, zero, sorry, zero over here. But over here, I would say become minus one. Why? Because I need to flexibility because the stand deviation can be zero. So I don't want that my node data is also zero. So I can specify that my water in the standard deviation become zero. So if I close this one, so if you close this one and I open the standard deviation, you can see that my masking area was going to be is no was good, is to, is minus one. So this is to to show you the that you have a flexibility. It's not that you're masking with a fixed value and you cannot change. Most of the time they mask with zero, minus nine, nine, nine. So this is how you want to be flexible with the, with the, with the different tools.
okay? So of course now all the different uh, PK composite is very good. Uh, and I make an example with all the raster, they were aligned with the same sides, but you can do the typical overlapping uh, composite when you have a partial overlapping like Modis image or Landsat image. Uh, so the, the maximum, so you are not like these, but you are in overlapping. And during the overlapping, okay, you can do the mean. Or for example, quite often, um, due to that in the satellite image, um, you have cloud contaminated pixel uh, that usually are very high, extremely high value in the reflectance signature. So rather than do the mean, you can get the minimum. Or you can even say, particular quantile value so not the median but your know, median is 50 50 percentile but you can say okay not the minimum because if not it can be water can be a area with some flood temporal flooding but can be like 30 percent of percentile so pk composite is extremely flexible on this and you you will see if you open the the help is very big in the same line, you have also the uh, PK, stat, uh, PK stat profile that is pretty similar, but doesn't deal with all the different overlaps. So all the rust, they need to be in the same size, okay? Usually how you do it, you create a VRT with a separate. So you have the multiband operation, VRT, and then you create the stat profile with the beauty that you can compute immediately the mean and the standard deviation for the image. So in the meantime, rather the PK composite was going to be one by one, PK stat profile can make the composite immediately, uh, making the, but all, they need to be all the, in the perfect, the same size. So mean and standard deviation, you will have two bands. So we can see this one, we can run this, we can see. So let me close this. Okay, you can see this one. My man is finished to work. Okay, so if you go back to over here, you can see that the mean, oops, too many, what is this? Okay, mean and standard deviation is very similar to the other one. Mean, max, months, mean, standard deviation is going to have two band and I can get immediately the GDAL info minus minus man and M and I can see that this one is going to be the mean and this one is going to be the standard deviation. So immediately is calculating two value. Okay, so of course, you can get the mean standard deviation again percentile. You can apply a masking procedure during so um, so it's very and usually PK stat profile is faster than PK composite, but you need to have very very well alignment. Rather, this one is going to dealing with all the different overlapping situation and so on. So this is something that you 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 can play around. With. Okay, so anyone has already in mind how to use this PK composite and PK stat profile. You say, okay, what happened to me that I was doing a temporal analysis, for example, very common also for some temporal analysis and you want to do monthly aggregation. You have daily precipitation and you want to do a monthly precipitation, you can do with this, okay? So it's very common procedure that can be done. Alon, have you been using for some something? Or Lonzu want to say something? Hey, just happy. I actually I have a question came to my mind. Um, so this PK composite and the uh, stat profile, I mean they are similar, like you explained already, but in terms of the uh, stats functions, does this stat profile is richer compared to composite because 
you showed, you know, means and deviations, those are very, very simple statistics. If you want to calculate something a little more complicated, uh, does the PK stat profile uh, give you a little more leverage? Uh, For example, uh, if you want to calculate uh, uh, percentile, you want to calculate uh, uh, composite uh, statistics, for example, um, um, Bayesian-based uh, uh, analysis posterior or some other more complex statistic, mm, whether it's possible. No, usually they arrive, so we can say, okay, start where we can see the, usually, usually is the, the F identify the, over here, you look, you can, you can get the typical uh, mean, median, variance, Maximum so mode in terms of uh, This one is is a temporal if it's uh, in 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 the percentile, okay? Um, where you can specify you do percentile, and then over here you can specify the level of percentile ninety eight. PK composite pretty the same, so. If you want something else or something more specific, you need to go inside to, you need to build your tools, you know. Um, over here, I think, is around the top. Dash F. Uh, let me, let me see. So over here you have. Uh, so over here you have. Uh, Mode composite, yeah, pretty the same, pretty the same. But we will see that we use picket composite. We will see next week. Yeah, pretty the same. The the wavelet transformation in the temporal profile. So they have some more sophisticated, but the rest you can you have to build it out. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. Um, let's um, let's have a break. We we come back at uh, at forty five. Yes, we come back to forty five. Uh, so I will be yeah. Come back at forty five. Okay, perfect. We'll come back. And uh, we we have we, we are continuing the PK tools. In particular, we are at filter and aggregate image. Okay, so the filter operation is or the aggregation operation is, is done when we we work at the pixel level, aggregating the value, aggregating or disaggregating the value of more pixels. Usually in the GIS environment is also called like moving window analysis. When uh, when the, move, the windows is moving, shift, uh, uh, shifting pixel by pixel. So they call it moving window analysis or even when they do it a block size analysis. So the block size is more three by three and then another three by three and then another three by three and so on. Um, so they can have operation maintaining the same pixel resolution or aggregating pixel resolution. So if you have the typical 90 meter resolution, okay, you two by 10 by 10 is becoming the, the so-called one kilometer. So you have the 10 by 10 becoming 100 pixel and you get, you get the average of these 100 pixels. So these can be it's super flexible. You have really many if you go to the help button in the in the PK filter, you have many many of these kind of filters. Some are typical GIS, like like mean, maximum, standard deviation, and so on. But some other are more image oriented, like uh, um, filter tick here, like the one like um, like the one for. Edging, edging detection in image or uh, Sobel filtering. Uh, let me check where they are. Uh, yeah, Sobel in the X and y, X, Y or X and Y direction, density, homogeneity, heterogeneity, uh, and so on. So they, they, they are quite a lot in this, uh, 
in this aspect. So, for example, if we see the one that are particular in inside this example, so you have the input image that is the usual one, this one, and we are running a PK filtering. Let's see the first one. We are running the PK filtering, getting the mean of 10 by 10, okay, 10 by 10, so in 100 pixel, and aggregate them at 10 level. So our pixel level is going to be become 10 times bigger and the value is going to be the mean. So this is a, a so-called aggregation. As you can see, the, the image become more blurry and the pixel size is, of course, now is 10 by 10, okay? Uh, you can have also some fancy, um, some, some fancy filtering, for example, maintaining the pixel size. So I don't have any kind of aggregation value and the filter rather than having there be completely a square 11 by 11, you know, is going to be uh, as a C as a circle, okay? So, and the value of the center of the pixel is going to be, is going to keep, is going to calculate, to, to retain the mean value of the 11 by 11 value inside of this circle. So, and as you can see, this one is going to be blurry but the pixel size is perfectly the same like the input, okay? So it, these are the two main difference when they call it about aggregate and disaggregate, they change the pixel resolution. Rather when you, you do a filtering operation in general with a moving window uh, analysis, they maintain the pixel resolution. And over here, uh, uh, over here the same, you can, you can get the percentiles, the deviation, minimum, maximum, and so on. So these are quite fancy. I use it quite a lot, especially not so much the, the one, the filtering image, but more the aggregate and uh, aggregate and disaggregate, okay? So for example, in one of our work, this is especially for Marlene and Aphrodite, when, when uh, because we are working 90 meter resolution for the full globe for our analysis, so I cannot open 90 meter file, you know, also because there are uh, almost 150 tiles. So I cannot open all the 150 files. So every time that I do a uh, I'm making a final operation, what I do it, I make uh, a PK filter with all the image that I transform to one kilometer, and then I can open at global level one kilometer. So there is no issues, okay? is uh, the, the file is not extremely big is usually it's less than one giga especially if it's integer you can open without problem uh nowadays in the uh so this one is something that uh, overlapping uh, so for example this one now in Google translate you have this function the r Especially, you know, the, especially the, the average, you can do the same kind of aggregation with the average, okay? So this is the kind of operation that you can do it very similar inside to GDAL Translate and also inside to GDAL Warp. So now you have many many options and GDAL Warp, they are slightly different. There are a few of them that are, uh, what is that? Resampling, okay, you need to, ah, uh, here. Yeah, now, for example, now you can also calculate mean, maximum, median, but before, for example, it was not possible to, so you were, you, you have to use PK filtering. But for example, you, you over here, there is no standard issue. So if there's some reason you want to calculate a spatial heterogeneity, so as a standard deviation of the value, you cannot in this, or you want to do a quantile because Q1, Q3 is 70, I think is the 75 and 25. So rather you can do with the, with the PK filter, you can get some specific quantile inside to the, to the moving window. Um, so these one are extremely, uh, is the typical aggregate function in, uh, inside R um, and they, they are very slow. So 
always try to do it with GDAL. So over here, you have a very, very big overlapping. So choose whatever. And again, PK filter, if I don't, if I don't, I'm not wrong, he can, he can accept a masking immediately. If I'm mask. No, okay, cannot accept the masking, but probably it can accept a value that he's using as a no data. So no data and be careful. So you will go into filter without consider that value and be careful. And sometimes you have no data value S. So you can specify even more than one no data to not consider. So if you don't want zero and one to be considered in your filtering operation, you can do it, you know. Um, you have something even super fancy. And actually something that I have to say is this one, is the Z dimension. So you can do a filtering in the X and Y, I will say, I will see, but also in the Z dimension. So if you have a temporal, uh, temporal analysis, temporal file as a separate file. So you can do a three by three by three. So like a cube mean, okay? For example, cube mean. So the zeta, the dz identify the, the, if you put three means in the th three bands. So one band before the band uh, that is computing and the other one. So this is extremely good when you, you want to do something fancy and we will see the, the use of pickle tool the pk filter so it's going to be pk filter pk compost next week when we do some wavelet transformation for gap filling so so it's, it's very fancy uh, way of working with this data um so some some as you can see there are many um Something, for example, this one, I never use it. So it, it's good to always to try and try to understand that over here, they are quite, quite a good example. So you can see, and it is very, you specify everything. Some, someone like the wavelet transformation and so on, filtering the Savisky coli. But anyway, we are going to see next week in a more deep way. Okay, anyone is already thinking how to use this PK filter? They say, okay, will be good because I'm trying to make monthly analysis. And uh, yes, some somebody. Hey, Giuseppe, I have a question. So in when you explain the PK filter, the filter function part, I saw there is a density. So does it mean the PK filter can create a density kernel? And that's number one. And number two, <coughs> when you, <coughs> I see this, 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 fun, this tool is very, you know, rich, has a lot of functions. Um, so one thing I think be interesting, especially for, for the downward machine learning is to calculate the convolution between images. Uh, I intuitive thinking if, if it can do this, Filter function, mean, um, median, all these things, it probably can also do the Im image convolution. Am I right or is it not? Uh, in my convolution, I'm not 100% sure. Over here, there are many. You can see all the many. Uh, for the density, I think the density is nothing else than. Not point density as a kernel density. I think it's just like a sort of counting ID. This one I never use this density. So testing. Okay. Um, the okay. Thanks, bro. Remember because Thank this you. Is a function that I ask. So it's a, uh, uh, yes, counting ID like uh, major, not the majority, but counting how unique ID you have inside to one pixel. If you have a low pixel and density, I think is in the same kind of line, but and we need to check. Yeah. All right. Thank you. 
any other sebastian you are trying to you were doing some temporal analysis if i remember correctly so this one can be really useful if i remember i mean not the density but you know the zeta function let me i <clears throat> i use a, uh, an array of points and from there i want to understand like the concentration like in urban analysis, where is the young people concentrated or where are the job opportunities distributed? Which... Okay, so for that one, we, you, I mean, you can do a sort of simple density. If you think about transforming all your point in little raster, you know, so each, each point become a raster, and then you can count out by the sum. So each point become uh, value pixel one. And then if you do a sum in a bigger square, so you can count, you, it's going to be the number of points that you have inside to this pixel. This is, is and then you divide by the surface, you get the density of the point. Or for this one, for this specific point, you have to enter inside to a real density estimation as a kernel density estimation. And over there, in, in GDAL and Piketus, you cannot really do it. You, you, you have to go inside to, R, uh, so, sorry, inside to grass to do it some density, kernel density estimation. Um, counting number of, number of points fell inside pixel and so on. But Again, you can do in a dirty way, being in a raster environment, it's going to be super, super fast. But if you want to, some real density where, like, uh, where you can identify also the bandwidth of your density, you, you have to use grass. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome, Alonso. Any, anyone else? So with the you're saying for the time series with the Z, you would just yes, would you do the aggregation on the on the uh, the BRT? Yeah, so the DZ is it's a you know you can use it as a uh, can be you can retain the same value you can retain the same get the same value. For example, if you have a monthly. And you want to do a monthly, daily, a daily observation, and you want to do a five days mean, okay, moving window in the temporal domain. So over there is going to be, you know, um, DZ five, and this one is going to to give you some uh, some some pixel. Yeah. Uh, can you can you heard me? What you say is that. Uh, yeah, and then but okay, you, would you do it on a um, would you do it on like a, a the VRT that you built in GDAL? Like you build Bravo, the yes, yeah. very very good. Yes, you can do the VRT. You do the separate. So if you have a single, let's say you have a single TIF with one TIF for each day, perfect. You do a build VRT separate, and then you can run PK filter with the five, let's D zeta five, and it's going to do a temporal mean through the each single day. So this one can be a good test that you can you can prepare. You can do it, yeah. For the going directly, I mean due to that some of you are, are working also in this temporal analysis. Especially if you are working with climate data, check out uh, also the CDO. The CDO is mean is stay for climate data operator. That is another command line uh, developed by the Max, Max Planck Institute in Germany, and is the, 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 the let's say the, the real backbone of climate data smashing. Let's call it. And this command line directly inside to the bash. So if you know bash, you are going to get this climate data operator in one week. So it's really, and for this uh, net, uh, is working directly with net CDF. It can output net CDF. So you, you can do a lot of these temporal analysis, like building like a, like a linear model inside to the, 
to the daily temperature to see if you have a climate change uh, a climate change uh, situation in your area or quite a lot so i use it also in combination also with gdl and pk tools because because you then the net cdf can also be transferred to teeth and so you can play but if especially if you are working with the climate data you can use video and again be inside to the bash you will get in in one week you get it yeah okay some other input in this line Jaime or Marlene Aphrodite, are you using PK filter or composite? No, I've never used them. Okay, cool. This one again for the aggregate and the climate, uh, especially when you want to make a visual, global visual inspection is very good. Jaime, you want to say something? No, uh, I've been using some of the tools, which I think are very, um, easy for the for the user. In, I think some of the procedures can be done with GDA utilities, but but the PK tools are more user friendly. Um, I, from my experience, I think the PK crop is very fast, very quickly. They run very fast, and okay. the other one which is very useful for me for my for my work has been the PK reclass. Yes, so we will see the PK class just after this exercise. So, um, yeah. so very good, Jaime. And um, so let's see something that also was asking during this lecture about the histogram. I think it was Sebastian or somebody else. Um, so quite often we want to know uh, we want to know the, the the histogram value, but not only as directly histogram as a final, let's say um histogram as a graph but as a text file to do some manipulation and then later on um later on you can build your if you want the histogram as a as a graph so in this particular aspect the pk stat with the function east stay for histogram uh is going to print is going to print for this file okay it's going to print two column file where you have the value of the pixel okay and how many pixels for all the full image okay so if for example we run this one is going to compute the histogram and then of course this one i'm going to get only the file but of course if you do tail it's going to you can see that is the full uh, file and be careful about this that uh, so these are again the number, the, the pixel value, and this how many pixels you have. This one then is just a TXT file that you can import it in. Uh, you can import it directly in Python. You can import it in uh, in R or in, even in GNU plot and do it a plot with your histogram. So pay attention that the histogram. Uh, do we have here? Yes. So uh, you can identify, and this is also good, extremely good, because you can identify the, the range of your Instagram from where you want the, the, the value be. So in this case, I'm going to start from zero, okay? Because I have some value that are negative, uh, are the minus 999 typical. And the, the fact that it's going to print all the pixel, even if it's not, it's not there. So for example, if I if I print the tail, sorry, the head, and I'm going to printing. So I have pixel value zero, but I have zero value. One and I have zero pixel. Two and I have zero pixel. So pay attention about this. But of course, now we, we are clever. So we can get rid of this, of course. And how? Okay, you tell me now. So this is a text file. So how you can get rid of, of this one? Because you don't need to, you don't need of this one. So this is printing, yeah? So if I do this one, can I print like this? No, why I can paste over there. Okay. 
anyone no no it's not this anyone can can it can it, i can get rid of this come on now you should have bash in your hands like like level pk start and i do minus i anyone is thinking that one is a text file correct yes or no it's a text file that i'm printing no my file is geodata slash temperature slash ug bio east okay so this is no sorry uh diff. so this is a text file that i'm printing the terminal okay can i get rid of this immediately can you use the oak yeah perfect yeah perfect you can use oak okay so immediately, so you can do, don't tell me that I lose the east. Ah, so I can use oak and say, if print number of two, if AWK, if, yeah. AWK, if. Number of two if dollar uh, two is equal, not equal. Dollar two, not equal to print. Okay. Oops. This is something that sometimes is. Um, Ah, yes, I, I missed the dollar two, not equal to zero. Okay, so you can see now I'm get rid of, of the two. Okay, so as you can see, everything that I'm printing in the terminal can be manipulated later on. And of course, you can you can play according. Can I do the sum of the, how many pixels I have? You do the sum of this line, this column, and you get the sum of the pixel. So you can manipulate as you want, you know? And if you, you want to say, okay, I want a number of pixels bigger than 80, you can do it. You do, if, ah, why I lost the, you do this one, you go over here, another if condition, you say, if dollar one is bigger than eight print, and then you do the sum. Okay, so you can, you can play as you want because it's becoming a text file. And this is an extremely good, to check for error in so your pixel value. If you open and you have few pixels, you will not, that they are out layer with a very high big number, you will not see. If you do the histogram, you know, a big number will be the last one. So it's very good to, to, to check, to check and you, you can do it in a looping condition. You can check it through all the image, you can create an histogram. And when you have an histogram, it's much easier. You don't see the pattern. You don't know where the artist pixel, of course. Then you, de you have to do another analysis to check where they are. But you can see, okay, so for example, you can see immediately that this one, they have a sort of normal distribution. You know, you have value, many high value, many pixel in around 80, and then become less and less over here, okay? So pay attention that you have, two kind of result immediately you have to one is with the integer value and you will get this when the image is integer rather you have another one that you have floating value when the image is floating okay so if it's floating 32 or floating 64 is not going to give you the number of each single floating point because if not there will be one number because the floating is always long you know so over here is going to thresholding, uh, sorry, not thresholding, making a bin section. And in particular, this is how you identify your bin. You say, I want to 20 bin. So it's going to be from the minimum to the maximum divided by 20. So again, if you don't see this integer, 
and you see the floating point is be is because your image is floating okay so don't don't get oh my god to it. so uh, and over here you can also specify the minimum and also the maximum okay so this is very useful to the minimum usually and the maximum are useful to to get rid of of the no data because if you don't put this one let's let's do it again that i don't tell sometimes the the history is gone this is something that i never understood in the terminal so if you do this one like before pk this is stop no i lost it again so if you do it this one, you can try by yourself. So if you do this one and you take out this, it's going to start for the, the minus nine nine and print all of them. Okay. So that's why it's very important to this source mean. It source because it's it's from the, the in, in input, so from the source. Okay. Um so this one let's see for example this example that was also mentioned from uh, from uh, from Jaime so image reclassification so the histogram for example is very is very important because i can you know create the histogram like this one and then say okay if my value is bigger so if my pixel value so in this case number one so we are in this line bigger than 75 so we are here bigger than 75 print dollar one and then zero okay else print dollar one and dollar one so let's see this value if we run this let's see what we get so we get a value we get a txt file because we are printing the histogram and we get the txt file so we get geodata slash temperature slash reclass bio reclass yes txt perfect this one so i get what i get all the value bigger than how well, it was yeah so print bigger uh, less than 75 less than 75 put zero if not put the value put one Okay, so in this case, for example, more than 75 is going to put one. So look, all this value zero and this one are one. Okay, so now I'm going to use BK reclassify. So this one is going to be my lookup table, they also call it, that I'm going to say, okay, use this lookup table and substitute every the 67 to 0 74 to 0 and so on okay so my my file from reclass for having many number now it become two numbers zero and one of course now i put zero one you can start from one who was asking me the other time so this one if you put a consequent number like one two three four five you get old you you is like scaling okay so this is another example how to do scaling. If you do perfect the same, but you do rather here you do print num num number of row, you would do a scaling operator operation. Okay. So this is how you uh, because over here you have so you, you can you can have a continuous value cut, but do you have a jumping? No, you don't have a jumping. So you can even subtract. So anyway, you can you can really combine it as you want. Over here, you can recognize immediately these the the flag for the compression that are perfectly the same like in GDAL. So as you can see, because you're using the same GDAL boundary, uh, bind, uh, sorry, uh, binding and GDAL yeah, API or binding for the internal compression and the internal operation. Okay, so using. GDAL to in input and reading output, yeah, input and reading, reading and output the TIFF. So these are, are very uh, handy, this operation. And um, Jaime, do you want to say a few words how you were using this reclass, for example, in your case? 
No, it's just a very similar example. So yeah, similar example. You, so yeah. in my case, for example, with uh, our um, basing ID, so I was using, I was raster file where I have you know many pixel with one, many pixel with an twenty three, and then and then a really huge number, for example. Okay, so these are my pixel value. Many with one, many with 23, and many with six. So this one, I was going to use integer 32 to use this one, or even 60, maybe 60. No, uh, yes, 32. So rather, I can reclassify, do one for this one, two for this one, and three for this. You know, and that my raster stay the same, but I can use byte. And of course, everything is becoming smaller, more faster, and so on. So the reclassify function is very useful for this kind of operation. Or all our analysis for the ID has been done with the reclassify many times, this kind of stuff. If not, your our number was going to be extremely huge. You know? So I use it quite a lot for this kind of operation. Okay. So uh, another one that I think this one everybody used because this is one one of the common tasks in GIS. You know, zonal statistic and the so-called zonal statistic, also regional statistic. You know. You know you have a polygon and you want to calculate the mean inside of this polygon with all the pixels that fell in this polygon, okay? Quite often, um, the typical example is a bit a uh, vector to raster in the sense that you have a vector and you want to calculate everything that fell as a pixel value inside of this uh, raster, okay? In this case, we have two, or, or two command lines. One that can operate uh, with image, and another one that can operate with a big strategy. Yes. Actually, I didn't. Anyway, you have another one that can operate with the image, uh, sorry, with a raster to raster and vector to raster, okay? So in this case, I make the example only to from the from the vector that quite often is the one that is more requested. Okay, so in this case, for example, you have uh, the P PK extract. So in this case, you have your shape file vector file that is going to be this one. Okay, you have that is going to be in this case is a SQL vector file, but is this uh, sorry no SQL SQLite vector but it's, it's like a, it's just a vector like a shape file and this one is going to be your your tiff okay so um so what i'm going to do it i'm going to calculate mean extent deviation inside to each single polygon but and the beauty of it is that during the the calculation mean extent deviation i don't have to use the typical no data because it's a, it's a big floating point okay so we can we can see immediately. Uh, be careful because about quite most of the time, take it as a as a grant. Uh, I mean, as a grant, take it as a. When you create a vector file, always remove before always, okay? Because sometimes um, sometimes you get a complaint that the vector is there. You want to, but some other like the geo package, they don't. They, they don't override, they append it inside that you don't realize. I created one extreme huge file like a few months ago because I didn't know I was creating this geo package. And then uh, Aphrodite that is not here, I say, I, why I have so many polygons one on, on top of each other? Because I was rerunning the code and it was appending. So every time that you create a vector file, remove it before, okay? So use it as a, as a standard procedure that is not wrong. So in this case, the same, I'm removing the vector file and then I create this new vector. So let's try to run, okay? So in this case, it's going to create the output file. So it's going to be this geodata. So I can go directly in the, in the geodata and I can open the OGR info 
you know, geodata, and then slash SHP, and then polygons. Polygons underscore stat dot SQL light. So my output, so now you can see the output, you can see immediately we say dash AL. Okay, so you can see immediately okay, each one of my polygon has a mean standard deviation and minimum. Okay, and again, this one is a text file. So you can manipulate again. You say, okay, from here I want only the, the mean. You do grab. Actually, let's, yeah, the mean is always zero probably, but this, the, the, the mean is grab mean. And you get immediately that there are three polygons and you want to calculate the mean inside. So this is really, really useful as a, uh, yeah, as operation. And here, actually you can, uh, you, you can create, you can define your, you know, your, uh, in this case I was creating SQL light, but you can also create a shape file. So by define the, the, the output format, okay? Then something very cool is that you can create immediately a CSV. So the perfect operation than before, but rather, uh, rather than creating a vector, you create a CSV. So over here, this CSV, you can, again, is a text file directly. So you can manipulate over here, you can say add. So let's run it and you can see that your text, your CSV is over here. And now is a text file. So you lost all the geographic information, but you, you have a vector file that over here you can do your AWK manipulate as you want. Okay. So this is a zona statistic is very, uh, Yes, it's, it's very common procedure. Or another one with the point extraction. So um, actually, yes, uh, JD was asking me before uh, how you can get the information if it's inside one polygon. And you can, I was say the GDA uh, location info if you have a, a raster as a United States, but you can have also the same information if you have a vector. So you can see, you know, you can uh, point extraction. So in this case, your point is going to be this, you know, the point is going to be your presence and you are going to get directly the CSV. So also here, let's, let's get this one and let's see what we have. Let me put over here this. Okay, so you can have also here, you can get the beginning head and let's put over here too. This is buffer and I will explain both. Okay, so these are, we, we say as a CSV, so we can operate as a text file. So let's see the first one. I'm going to, to get the CSV at each single point where my point are this one. And for each value, I can get, I can get the mean, okay? The mean, the standard deviation and the minimum. Uh, presence, ah, yes, because this is a, probably is a multi-file. Well, yes, so this is going to be the mean and standard deviation FID. So these are each single point, and I'm going to get the information of the mean standard deviation. Now, I, I, yes. So the same operation, but rather than do it at point location, you can do it at that point. So at that pixel plus the pixel nearby, a sort of buffer around the point. Okay. So you, you can specify in this way. Okay. 
the Kira forgot to do it. Uh, so you can you can have a maximum flexibility with these this information. Okay, so over here I'm pointing the mean standard deviation and minimum, probably because this one is a multi. Uh, now we're not working. Okay, I do like this. Because the GDA length of this is a multi band, probably. GDA length no, is only one band. So we need to see why I get the standard deviation of the tree. Presence point start. Yeah, okay. This one need to, to need understanding why this one I get to value when the point is going to hit only one one ID, one one value in the pixel, not not three. But anyway, you can you can play around with this one. So that's the, this is the beauty. And again, there are plenty of uh, you see before over here, we just there are plenty of these. All of them fill no data for you know you have no data you want to make a kind of interpolation a growing procedure and re refill all the no data value okay so with this one you have um you know the pk asking from point to shape file you have an x and y coordinate you want a shape file to to make a visualization of your point you can use this one you this one for example this one i didn't use so much pk sieve is when you do uh, you do a classification and then you have a salty pepper environment uh, result that you want to do a kind of uh, filter analysis to remove single pixels so it's a matter of checking um so it's is is really convenient this one filter them i never did it but it's something that maybe will be good to to check it with kind of filter them so is, is it going to be a special filter because in the demo especially when you have to do hydrological model you 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 want to do a change in resolution but maintaining the edge so maybe the, he went peter went in this direction with the filter the dam so it's a matter of combining GDAL and PK tools and really you, you can do all the different kinds of operation, all of them. It's just a matter of see how they, you have to match it, okay? So it's really rare. Again, you, you enter inside GRASS and I have a video of GRASS. I will point to you in the assignment where you want to follow. Um, that you enter in GRASS you enter in grass for doing something really sophisticated, like some particular to a particular field, like I was mentioned before, some spectral image analysis or some um, hydrological modeling in our case, or some, uh, some other operation uh, more uh, particular, like uh, point distance, for example. Point distance, there is no point distance between uh, or, or cost path analysis in uh, that one there is not so something more sophisticated you have to enter in that but whatever is pre-processing let's call it is good is is the best way to do it in gdal in pk tools so, so you prepare all your data and then you enter in, in r in python in grass where all your data are ready to do the modeling this is where then the modeling kick in because you have all your raster very well defined you create your table with GDAL location info or with PK extract. And then you enter just with the modeling, with the table to do your modeling. That can be a linear model, can be a machine learning, can be some, uh, some other kind of model. But this is how we, we work in a, in a progressive way. Okay. So yeah, so we open the floor for some discussion. If you have ideas, uh, need to do this kind of analysis, how we can do it. Because in the beginning, it's very tedious to, to find, because you can find it, again, you, you have to think in the final product that you want to do it, but then you have to find 
each single step and you have to find each single, you have to define each single step and then find each single tools that does that step. So that one can be a bit uh, confusing and time consuming to check the different, but you can do everything. <clears throat> Okay, so somebody that never talk, like Miriam, Emalat, if they are there, Nina, they have something particular. If not Lonzo, we give the word to Lonzo. Hey, Giuseppe, yes. Um, I'm quite interested in, there's two tools here. One is the PK, FSAN and the PKSVM. And okay. they, they mentioned here on the page both like uh, classifiers. Uh, will you be able to say a few words about these two tools? Okay, so this one. Okay, so this one. These are the, no? Yeah, so th these two are for classifiers. Yeah, one about it is a neural network classifier. Perfect. So these two are two classifiers. Um, command line utility, one for support vector machine and the other one for uh, neural network, okay? Uh, now, I don't know which kind of neural network to use because then with Antonio, we will see there are plenty of neural networks. So neural network is a, is a big brand for different kind. But over here, you have a lot of... Um, um setting and flag that you can specify and probably there is also some point that is point to the to the library that is using and is also um most of the time they are these are support vector machine and neural network are for supervised classification so you need some spectral signature of or um yes point that you you know that have been identified as a class number A, B, C, forest, agriculture, or whatever, okay? So um, I would say the truth that I didn't use so much. I'm not so much in the land cover classification. Um, but I know that has been one of the first tools that has been using to, to do classification and has been developed and they are quite fast and so on. And you can do a lot of, uh, especially with this one back, back forward propagation and all the different settings then then Antonio will tell. Uh, but this one, I would say they are the PK support vector machine, but PK uh, neural network are the one that are a bit more in the image processing. All the rest is pre-processing, we call it. Um, so these are the, so for example, this one I, I didn't use. So PK stat profile that you can identify uh, oh no, sorry, PK start profile, we say, so it, um, but this one, uh, PK SVM support vector machine is also another one. Classic, uh, for example, these one, between these and these, I don't know which one is the difference. We need to classify raster image and this one feature selection for, uh, this is feature selection for vector machine, okay? So the, 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 they are tools that probably they are in combination. You do first the feature selection and then you do the, the classify. So this is something that you need to, uh, to go deep in understanding one by one. Yeah, also multi-layer perception regression, artificial neural network. So that's a regressor and probably based on the multi-layer perception concept. Okay. So thanks. PK Regan, yeah, maybe that's something interesting. Um, yeah, I think Antonio will elaborate, yeah. Yeah, you will get in more into the details. Uh, any, anyone else uh, have some question about, uh, okay, I'm trying to do, yeah, these are the best things to ask. Yeah, I, I have a question about related to classification. Yeah. Um, 
I assume that these uh, methods are working pixel by pixel, but there's is there some segmentation possibilities here in uh, GW yeah. or PK okay. tools? Good question. This one, no. So over here in PK tools and GDAL, no. I did some segmentation in uh, Orfeo toolbox and also in grass. Hmm. In Orfeo toolbox and grass, there are two uh, more than more than one algorithms. And especially, especially our field toolbox is very advanced in, uh, uh, in this one. And our field toolbox, if you just do it OTB, that is the OTB, and you do press it, you have, it's already started. So over here, you have all the command for the, and you will see one of these, and the field toolbox is, is super remote and sensing oriented, okay? So a few times I've been using, and again is very uh, is command line directly inside to the bash. So as soon you prepare your data set with GDAL and with the PK tools, then you can do the next step for the segmentation. And it's quite good. It's been developed by no, it's very good. I've been uh, I met the the developer, a French guy. Maybe I will try to invite him. It will be a good. To present to present the tools um, in Matera, and uh, is is very is very very is not very well used. Probably less than than grass or other tools, but it's super. And also the manual is very well done. So I encourage you to start to use it. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Somebody else or there's. Alonso, for sure you have plenty. <laughs> I've been trying to understand how can I translate the things that I do in like QGIS with just the coding, but I need to practice like a lot. It's it's a lot of information, new information. Yeah, but you know, trying to always to do it. Okay, what do you do with the uh, with uh, with QGIS? You say, okay, I'm going to do a buffer. Okay, GDAL buffer, how to make a buffer in GDAL. You know, and you will see proximity, GDAL proximity, we say a few days ago. Or you do overlay, you know, in QGIS, you do overlay between vector, overlay in OGR. And you, you can see that they are coming, union, or intersect in OGR. Or you can do band combination, band calculation, and you do GDAL calc. So every time that you do, one operation in QGIS, try to find the, the, the respectivity in, in PK tools and because there are all of them, all of them, you know? So it's, uh, it's just a matter. And if you don't find, insist, because they are there. Yeah. Everyone has been already go through these steps and has been developed tools, you know? So also, you know, even if you enter inside Python, you start to use it. For example, there are some GIS Python, binding like Rasterio is one of the, but they have the same concept, you know, uh, histogram and, you know, so there is no one tools that you write and go from the cropping to the classification, you know, you have always breaking steps and, and, and then for each step you have to find the tools. So it's, um, it's very appealing in this contest. Yeah, I'm thinking about like, it's the same as QGIS, but you have to put the, the tool together yourself. Yeah, you have to call it one by one. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, do it, try to, to combine it, you know, when you do in such a way that you, because in QGIS, you know, it's good for some fast checking, you make some testing, but then when you have to operate continuously, then and it's better to spend a bit of time in the coding because then when you find the error, you rerun the code and then you change it. And then you rerun and then you change it. It's very rare that you write a code and then it's done. No, it's, you have to done many times, yeah. I'm, ha I'm having like a lot of, I'm wasting a lot of time like <clears throat> charging huge files. So in this sense, if you get them like in a TXT, it runs really fast and you just need to, to get the, the, the code like 
running, but that's the same time that I'm using, like waiting for the, the file to load and, and, and to display it. So, so it, it's a transition. Yeah, it's a transition. Yeah, it's and uh, you know, especially when you you working and nowadays we work in with a full globe, a few United States, and you know, and there are plenty of it's, it's rare that you work only with one file. You know, um, for our work, we have been creating a file, a very huge file of eighty giga, because user request. But I will never work with a file with eighty giga because then every time that you have to do something, you have to wait hours. You know, to do only one operation. So is you find the tiles, you download tiles, and then these tiles need to be aggregated, merged, reclassified, and this is how you do it, you know. So try to do it and develop all these skills, you know, towards the Matera week, because there is where you have to asking us the tip of the iceberg, you know. You, you know, trying to, to arrive there with the tip, with the, not like, how I can do cropping with GDAL Translate. No, if not, you lost the opportunity, you know, try to, okay, how I can do cropping and aggregation of thousands of images. I've been developing the tools and now I want to go one step further. So this is where I push you guys to arrive in Matera, yeah. Okay, thank you, Isabi. Okay, cool. Okay, so if there are no any more question so that's it for today for next time so keep uh, so if someone didn't pay the 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 deposit or this can just mention yes it's going to do it and then i one or two days i will give the green light but i mentioned you is already close to green um, for the matera course and then keep keep working with the tools and then uh, we we met next week on Tuesday that we are going to do, um, we are going to do, yes, the use of PK tools and GDAL for a time a time series analysis. So now we, we see each single one. Now over there, you will see a full computation with these tools, okay?